want to tell you we have Janice Fernandez with her photographer, Brian Eli, on the phone right now. She's with us. Janice, we are so glad you guys are safe and you are okay and you made it through the storm. Oh, hey, JC, Julie. Uh, it's so good to hear all of you right now. It was a very rough night for all of us here on Marsh Harbor, but we're really happy to hear from you guys and we're happy we're able to make contact with you. So, um, the last time we spoke was yesterday at around 2 p.m., and it was during the eye. We had um, already gone through the front wall of the, of the eye wall, and when we started to walk around to see the damage, it was unbelievable. It literally looks like a war zone here. You couldn't even recognize this resort right now. So after we hung up the phone, we actually had to make an executive decision because we realized the wind was coming from the south and the storm surge was really starting to push through. So myself as well as Brian Eli, um, luckily have made some good friends here at the resort and we were able to get into higher ground because we were very concerned about the storm surge. It was getting very close to that bunker at the hotel that we had been talking about. So we felt like our best bet in riding out the second half of the storm was to be on higher ground. And while we were on the higher ground, um, we literally saw the roof of the building next door to us fly off, just completely fly off. It looked like a rag doll. And I was actually sitting in the bathroom, and then the wall, the ceiling, rather, of the bathroom started to come apart. But it was the drywall that just completely fell. So we rode out the storm in a room, um, sort of huddled in a closet, um, to get through that second part of the eye wall that was very intense. And everything here is completely destroyed. Um, our rental car has a huge uh, piece of wood that just went through the windshield and completely destroyed it. Um, a lot of cars are also underwater. Balconies were blown off, so it's actually very hard to even walk around the resort because balconies have been blown off, so as you're walking around, you have to stay very close to the wall so that you don't fall. Um, we're still experiencing windy conditions right now. We haven't had any communication at all, um, not even with uh, the Bahamian government, and we have really no idea what the radar even looks like, but last night at around 10 o'clock, we thought maybe the worst was over, and it just kept going. It was relentless. I have never been through a storm that just did not give up. It was constant wind, constant rain. All we could hear outside our window was debris flying around everywhere. It wasn't until this morning that there was some relief, and even so, it is still very windy outside, but enough for us to at least walk around and, of course, get communication with you guys back at the station. So we're very glad to hear all of you right now. Denise, it is so great to hear your voice, to know that Brian is doing well. Also, it sounds like you were not able to get to the bunker where you guys had planned to ride out this storm. What kind of a decision was that to make? Uh, Eric, it's, it's a little hard to, to hear. Um, can you go ahead and, and, and repeat your question? Well, you described what you went through riding out that storm, and we knew that you guys had a pre-planned bunker, a safe space, to, to experience the most devastating effects from Hurricane Dorian, but it sounds like you guys weren't able to get to that pre-particular spot, is that right? Yeah, so the bunker ended up being all right. Uh, what ended up happening, uh, it, it literally is stuff that I've never seen in my life. So when the eye wall uh, moved through and we were under the eye, um, we started walking around the property, and I was walking with hotel staff, and we actually started to hear people yelling out for help. And when we started to walk around, we noticed that there was a big portion of the property that was underwater to the point where the water was rushing. It sort of looked like rapids. And um, the hotel staff spotted a family of four trying to walk through the water, and they were able to get the family out safely. But there were actually several families um, from a nearby community. There's some nearby apartment complexes. Um, trying to find safe ground because their homes were completely underwater. So what ended up happening, the hotel ended up having to take in sort of these refugees, people who had nowhere to go, and uh, the bunker just didn't have a lot of space. Um, but they obviously were not going to leave these people out in the storm. And what sort of makes this story so ironic is the family that they rescued, it was um, 
two young girls, a father and a mother, Brian, Eli, and I had met them the other day. We were actually getting ready to do a live shot by the hotel, and they were sitting and having lunch and just sort of sparked a conversation with them. And when we saw they were the ones being rescued, we were, of course, shocked because we couldn't believe that this was a family we had met the other day, but also relieved that they are okay. And as far as we know, everyone who is staying at the hotel is okay. A um, couple of injuries um, in terms of people walking around, and there's a lot of debris, so some people have stepped on nails and things of that sort, but otherwise everyone is doing okay. Um, but sort of a situation that we're facing right now is we have to ration food. The hotel had enough food for three days for hotel guests, but they ended up taking in a lot more people. So now they have to ration food to figure out how they're going to be able to feed everyone and make sure we have enough food for the next few days. And, you know, while I'm on the phone right now, I know that um, Local 10 broadcasts to the Bahamas. I know that we broadcast, obviously, here in Abaco, but also to Napa. And what's been very difficult is we just can't reach anyone. So I'm really hoping that anyone in the Bahamas, especially government officials, if they're listening, they need help in Marsh Harbor. They need a lot of help here. And so I hope if they're listening right now that they can hear that, because um, we have not been able to contact any government officials. And we're sort of the line of communication for so many people, and we're trying to do our best to get that information on air, hopefully reaching the right authorities so that they know that there are a lot of people in Marsh Harbor, and this is just one resort. I don't even know what the rest of the island looks like right now. I know, and we're looking at the best video we have. Those at home watching are probably asking, why does it keep repeating? Because that's all the video we have. As you can imagine, cell phone towers are down. Uh, power is out. I mean, everything's underwater. So we're hoping to get more images when we can from you. But you're on a satellite phone. That's the only way you're able to speak to us right now. Um, of course, we're wondering, Janice, where did you ride out the storm? And how, how was that? How did you stay safe at, at, at the second location you picked when you decided against the bunker? Yeah, so the first location, we were um, at a fitness center that was right next to the bunker, and it was, it was, it was scary. The door actually would not stay shut. So uh, Brian, Eli, and I um, actually had to hold on to the door for about 10 minutes because we didn't want the door swinging out and then, of course, having the storm come into the center. Um, and then a very great friend we met, David, um, he grabbed some rope and was able to tie it down to some weights, and that was able to keep the door shut for the first half of the eye wall. The second half, um, we rode out on the second floor of a room, and it was actually David's room where we rode out the storm because our room, we couldn't get in. Our key cards were not working. Only some rooms were working. So thankfully, thanks for, so thankful for him. He's been a great help to us. So he let us ride out the storm in his room, and um, he he was just been great. So we rode out the storm there, and you you know, JC and Eric, I'm gonna be completely frank with you. Uh, there were moments where I was very very nervous, and and JC, you know Brian Eli very very well, and he's a tough guy. And there were moments that he got nervous, and at one point we sort of grabbed each other's hands as we saw the storm pass through. Um, and just kind of gave a silent prayer. I'm very, very happy that we got through it. Janice, we are so happy that you guys are okay. We were very nervous. It has been a long 12 hours for all of us worried about you from your last report. We saw the damage that was coming your way. We are so glad to hear that you are okay. I do want to let you know there is still plenty of rain headed your guys' way. You guys are just east of the actual eye, and you know this system is still a very strong Category 5 hurricane, and I know you obviously cannot get cell service, so you're not going to be able to watch the radar but I want you to pay very close attention and listen because we can hear the winds already pounding where you're at you got to pay very close attention to that because we're hoping that this hurricane is going to take that north trek away from the Bahamas but it right now is stalled it is barely moving the movement as of 8 a.m. this morning Janice was crawling to the west at one mile per hour so unfortunately you guys still have a very long road ahead today we want you to be safe we want you to understand that more rain is coming your way. Some of those outer bands are still gonna affect you and we just want you to be safe.
Oh, well, th- thank you so much for telling us that, Julie, because we feel so secluded not being able to look at a radar and everybody here sort of asking, is it over, is it over? Because we just can't believe how long this storm has lasted. It's just, I keep saying the word relentless, but Dorian just does not want to leave. It's just incredible how long this storm has lasted. Hey, Janice, we're going to ask you more about what you're seeing in just a moment, but as much as we have been desperate to hear from you, your family has got to be just so relieved to hear your voice. You know, Brian's wife was very, very anxious, and she too was relieved this morning when he called. So if you will, please, just speak to your family for a moment. We, we, we actually called our family before we called you. Um, not that we don't know our duty as reporters, but we knew that we had to let them know we were okay. So my mom and dad know I'm okay. Um, they were very worried throughout the night. Kristen was, Kristen, Eli's wife, was very worried as well, but we did make those phone calls to let them know that we are safe. Janice, hey, buddy. It's Luke, Luke Doris. Um, so good to hear your voice. Uh, but yesterday, we, we were... Brandon Orr and I were on as you were entering the front side of the eye wall. Before the eye wall had gotten there, you were out doing a live report and it didn't look that bad. It looked gusty and I sent you an email and I said, Ju- uh, uh, Janice, get ready. This thing's going to be completely different when you get into the eye wall because when people think of a Category 5 hurricane, they think of may, maybe some people think that the whole storm is a cat. No, it's the eye wall is where you experience those very intense winds. Were you surprised when you got into that eye wall? Did anything catch you off guard or by surprise, maybe the storm surge, anything that you didn't quite expect or see coming uh, as the storm hit at its peak fury? It's good to hear from you, too, Luke, and I can tell you that um, when I read your email, I I read it, and I said, okay. I told Brian, I was like, let's get ready, but it is, you are never really ready. I did not expect to see what I saw. It was obviously those whiteout conditions, but all you see is just everything being flown around. We saw a door literally off its hinges just flying. And there was a truck that moved about 20 feet sort of into the whole tunnel. And I, I just, you know, obviously I'm a South Florida girl. I, I grew up in South Florida. I've experienced uh, hurricanes. I've experienced tropical storms. But this by far is, is the most intense storm I've ever experienced. And all, all I can say, and this is just advice that I hope uh, viewers take, at home, no matter what category storm, you have to prepare. And and if we ever, let's hope this never happens to South Florida, but if we, we ever get a Cat 4 or Cat 5, it is like nothing you could ever even imagine. I mean, literally everything looks so flimsy. These strong structures, these strong trees, everything just looked like paper. That's how easy it was for the wind to pick it up and just blow it around. And then uh, we sort of feel like the second part of the eye wall, which was after the eye came through, and then it was the, the end of the, uh, sort of the tail end of the next eye wall. It felt like that may have been more intense, at least from our perspective, because that's when we saw the roof of a hotel literally just fly off, and the debris that was flying around. I mean, Brian and I have been taking lots of pictures and shooting video, and of course, once we're able to get that back to the station, we will give it to you. But everything you see, it just looks like a junkyard. I, I keep saying it looks like a war zone, but, but it truly does. It looks like a bomb just went off. It's, Mother Nature is so much more powerful than I could have ever imagined. You know, Janice, you went through a storm that ranks among the strongest ever to make landfall, and it's still... Uh, occurring. We, and I know that our signal gets picked up in the Bahamas. Uh, do you have any words of advice for those that may be able to hear us still? I know that a lot of them have lost power already. Maybe some of us are listening over radio. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. But if you could tell, you know, maybe any pieces of advice, anything that you gleaned from your experience to help keep, uh, for people to keep themselves safe. Uh, you know, the best advice I can give to absolutely everyone, from our viewers to anyone in the Bahamas, if anyone listening, or anyone in any part, is do not ever take this lightly. I know a lot of times, um, and and as meteorologists, you guys know this, 
that sometimes we're for, you're forecasting a storm and you think it's going to have this way, it ends up going another way, and we, you always get those emails with people who are so frustrated saying, oh, no, see, it didn't come. They said it was going to, and it didn't. And we understand that frustration, but, but listen to me. Um, be happy those storms don't come. Be happy they don't come. And if one does come, preparing is key. Um, I was talking to you about how we literally have to ration food now, and thankfully Brian and I did grab supplies before the storm, so we do have enough food, hopefully. I would think maybe for the next two days, and water, of course, being the most important as well, but preparing is key. And even when you prepare, when it's a Category 5, it's not even enough. I mean, shutters, aluminum shutters were at this hotel, and they blew off the windows. So I, I pray that, I mean, my heart goes out to the people here in the Bahamas because they're just really wonderful people, but I pray that a storm like this never hits the South Florida because if it does and you hear us on the television telling you not only to prepare but to evacuate, you need to do it. Trust me when I tell you, you do not want to experience a storm like this. It was terrifying, and, and it takes a lot for me to, to get scared. I'm a pretty tough cookie, as everyone at the station knows that, but, but I was scared. And, and you know, um, not, not to get into all that stuff, but uh, I held on to a necklace I, I always wear that my great-grandmother passed down to my grandmother and passed down to me, and I was clutching that necklace very hard. It has a, a saint from Cuba. It's very, uh, the traditional uh, sort of hair from my family. I was clutching that thing so hard. Uh, I can't tell you how scared I was. I was really just in that mode. Uh, Brian and I literally went into survival mode. We, we had to do everything we could to just survive at that point. Janice, you have such great words of wisdom for everybody here in South Florida that is watching and that is listening. And for the people in the Bahamas, our thoughts and prayers are out for them as well. We thank you for your reporting and your strength and your courage. And we are so glad that you are okay. And you're going to be able to tell this story many, many times. So you can always prepare our South Floridians for when we do talk about hurricane watches and warnings and tropical storms. You are a pro. You've been through many years of it. I've worked with you for years, and you've done such a great job, and we're so proud of you. And thank you for your words of wisdom, because you've lived it, and that's something we'll always remember. It's gone down in history, Janice. All right, and Janice was just talking a little bit ago about the Bahamian officials, uh, uh, quite frankly, making a plea for help in the area she's at. She's in Marsh Harbor in uh, the Abaco Islands. And we are getting new video. We're going to turn it around to you as soon as we can from Freeport. And we're getting reports that people are trapped in their homes. Some uh, went to seek refuge in a church, and we're hearing that the water is up to the ceiling. People need to be rescued um, in Freeport. We, we do have confirmation of that, and we know how bad it is where Janice is in Marsh Harbor. So we really want to make sure if by any chance they're listening on the radio or somebody does have power uh, and they're listening to our local 10 coverage, they need help in the Bahamas, specifically in Marsh Harbor, specifically in Freeport. And so Janice is able to get us as much information as she can right now. And so hopefully this is translating out there as much as possibly it can to the Bahamian officials. We just want to make sure we get that out and uh, the devastation is something that's it's going to be so widespread across these islands. Yeah, that 9 a.m. advisory. Yeah, in. absolutely. You know, Jeannie, one of the things that our team has been very concerned about and you described the terrifying visuals of the power of Dorian's winds, but was the storm surge. I wonder what kind of water levels you're seeing in the area you are right now. So the back of my resort um, had a, a little beach, and during the storm, the water came right up to the grass, and, and that was why Brian and I made that executive decision to seek higher ground, because even though we were a bit elevated, uh, we were talking yesterday with Betty and Brian Norcross, and they were very concerned with the storm surge because the wind direction uh, Brian Norcross was telling us was going to come from the south, and that is exactly where the water was coming from. So we made that decision. Um, actually, this morning, it looks like at least the water on the beach here at this resort has pushed back, so that is good to see. Um, but this is a pretty big resort, and I do know that uh, yesterday 
we saw rushing water in the parking lot, and that is where those people had to be rescued. So we haven't had a chance to walk over there. Um, we finally were able to get back into Brian's room. Uh, just a little bit of water on the floor, but his room is okay. Don't know about my room, but, uh, you know, nothing valuable there. But um, we're sort of kind of hunkering down in his room right now. And like Julie said, um, it's not exactly over yet. So we're kind of just kind of keeping very close right now before we start to walk around and assess more of the damage. But, um, you know, Marsh Harbor, if you've ever been, is obviously a, a wonderful little town with wonderful people. But it is surrounded by water. And, and I'm so worried for some of the business owners we spoke with uh, a couple of days ago and some of the people we spoke with a couple of days ago. I'm so worried for them because I can only imagine that the roads are probably probably cease to exist and that's sort of got to be the first step. you got to clear the roadways so that people can start to get out. Um, I'm not really sure what the game plan is in terms of a government perspective. We, we're going to try to hope to get in contact with the government. There is uh, a media crew here um, based out of NASA, but they're here riding out the storm and they were able to make a quick call last night um, to NASA and to the station to let them know that they got to let the government know that they got to get people out. And um, there's about 6,000 people in on the island, at least, small island. Um, I, I think, and I do know some evacuated. I hope the ones in the low-lying areas did. I, I'm very worried to, to learn about to learn about the aftermath of all of this. I'm very worried for some of the people here. Janice, I just want to interject because we are getting new video into our newsroom right now and that's what our viewers are seeing. Not only did we just have some of the video from the crew you were talking about, the local crew in the Bahamas, but now we're getting video straight out of Grand Bahama. Um, we're looking at Freeport and it is devastating. The storm surge, the flooding, the cars and homes underwater. It is just awful. I wanted to take a moment. So many of us from South Florida, like me, like you, you. Um, we lived through Andrew and that was you know our cat five that came directly at us and that was in the 90s well before we had hurricane windows and and structures and buildings built specifically to withstand hurricanes like our building here in Pembroke Park our local 10 studios I know you haven't been able to get out too much did was there any possibility that you were able to see how hurricane windows stood up to a cat five of this magnitude so I do believe that uh, we have these sliding glass doors in the hotel that are on the balconies, and I do believe those are actually hurricane impact windows, and I can tell you that um, they've, they've made it. They've, from what I'm looking at, the windows seem to be okay, at least the ones that are the hurricane impact windows. Uh, they're, they're okay, um, but the roof, not so much. The roof was really where things got scary just to see the roof fly off. And, um, you know, we wrote it on the second floor, but if you were on the third floor, you were probably completely exposed to the hurricane. And even uh, balconies, I mean, you're talking about these metal railings, and literally it, it looks like I just totally bent over. I, I can't believe I've never seen this shape before on, on these metal balconies. It's incredible how strong this storm is, but, but so important to note because, like you said, J.C., a lot, a lot changed after Andrew in terms of getting those hurricane impact windows. And then, of course, we learned the big lesson about putting tape on your window does absolutely nothing. But when a Cat 5 is coming, a Cat 5 is coming.